Hey gang, Chef Eduardo Garcia down here in New Mexico. Uh, we are on a late season bull only elk hunt. I want to share a dish that I love. So in Italy, they're going to call this Oso Buco. For me, this is a braised elk shank dish. I'm going to leave them whole. So this is off the four shanks. And so first things first, we're going to take some pretty basic seasonings, herbs de Provence, the lavender, marjoram, thyme, basil, rosemary, black peppercorns. We'll season it with some salt. And then my company, Montana Mex, makes a jalapeno seasoning, oregano, cilantro, sea salt, garlic, and then a red chili blend. This is four different dry red chilies. So we use all this to create a mix that we're gonna season these shanks with. You can be as wild and woolly as you like. More than anything, just make sure you have some nice even coverage. And we're gonna wanna sear on a high heat, but not scorching. You don't wanna burn. Put a little oil on there. Shanks go right in. These are all the bones from the front shoulder. I'm just adding these. Could have thrown them to the dog, could save them for stock. I'm gonna add them to this whole braise. They're just gonna contribute to the whole flavor here. And now we just gotta let it sit. You get impatient, you start moving things around too quick. You're gonna break that seal before it has a chance to develop. You're gonna let moisture out. And so basically the seal is helping keep the moisture into the muscle in that long cooking process. Yeah, I like hunting. I love cooking. Happy. Elk shanks are browning. We have our aromatics nearly ready. We're gonna use ketchup instead of tomato paste, a little bit of red wine, and then have a game stock on the back burner, and that's gonna be the broth that we use to braise this elk shank in. Preheating the oven. We're gonna cook these at about 275. Elk shanks are brown, so we're gonna pull those off. Next up is gonna be our aromatics. We'll cook all these at the same time, except for the garlic. Aromatics going in. And just like with the meat, we're gonna brown the aromatics, bring out the flavor in them. Turn our heat down just a touch. All right, next up, we're gonna add a little of our gourmet tomato paste, AKA Montana Mex ketchup. Now's a good time, garlic going in. Got our meat browned off. Our aromatics have been lightly browned off. We added our tomato, which is that ketchup. Let that also caramelize a little bit. And if we look in here, you'll notice that there's all this sticky residue, all kind of the, the nice and browned, not burnt, you don't want burnt, but nice and browned bits of food matter. I mean, it's pieces of the meat, it's pieces of all these different vegetables. And then we don't want to leave this in here. This is gonna be our one pots cooking on this dish. So we just want to release that and I can smell that that tomato is starting to just almost like toasted bread, if you will. I don't know how else to explain it, but we don't want it to burn. So now at this point, we want to add just straight liquid. We're going to start with our red wine. A couple cups. That also is going to add flavor, sugars, and also acidity, which will help balance this dish out. We're gonna take our game broth. We wanna come up just about halfway up the sides. Now we're gonna add our meat and our bones right back. So we're gonna cook this today through this evening and then have this for dinner tomorrow. So by tomorrow, this should be heaven in a, heaven in a bite. I'm gonna put a lid on them. It's definitely one of the last things we wanna do. The reason for the lid is all this moisture evaporating. We don't want it to reduce. It's gonna be in that 275, 275 degree oven for hours. So if we kept the lid off, not only would the outside dry off, parts of the meat that are above the braising liquid, but we would end up reducing the liquid down to the point that it would dry out, which is not what we want. So we're gonna lid it. 
ओके I'm going to flip it, turn those shanks a couple times while it braises, just because the parts that are not in the gravy will dry out if they're on top. Outside of that, with a braised dish, there's not that much that has to happen. We'll see that in about eight hours. All right, so with a dish like braised elk shanks, I want a good bread to soak up all that gravy. So I thought, why not make a focaccia bread? We have is we have organic bread flour, instant dried yeast, salt, and a good quality extra virgin avocado oil. Because we're at elevation, because it's also fairly cold in all these buildings, we're gonna get about a pound of bread flour in here. About four cups, give or take. About a teaspoon of yeast. Salt, also go about a teaspoon of that. Give that a stir. Next up, water. Oil. Get everything incorporated. Because it's so cold in all of these outbuildings that we're in, I'm starting this the day before. Right, you can see how it's kind of breaking right now, right? Not getting stringy. So we want to keep working this until getting a nice, nice, elastic, stretchy dough. It's getting a little stretchier. My gut tells me it's a little wet, so I'm not going to be worried about working it too long or too far. Look at this, this is interesting. So see how we're starting to get a little bit more stringiness to it, like kind of stretchy bubble gum. That's that gluten getting developed. I'm gonna make sure to scrape the sides so we're not just working the center of this dough ball. That I think is gonna be good. So dough put together, nice clean glass bowl. Put a little oil on the, the walls and the base of the bowl. Keep it from sticking. So then, got our focaccia dough, bread flour, salt, yeast, a good extra virgin oil. I used avocado oil and water. Mixed together so you get a nice loose dough. We're gonna cover this. And typically, I would refrigerate this overnight if I was gonna bake it tomorrow. I don't think we need to refrigerate it here, so I'm just gonna leave it at the room temperature of the kitchen, to about 45 degrees maybe. Tomorrow, we'll take this dough, we'll have it, put it into our cast irons, and then we'll bake two of these loaves on the fire, finish the elk shanks on the fire, and have campfire meal tomorrow night. Our focaccia bread has risen. You can see it's almost doubled. So next step is we're gonna turn it out onto the surface, put it in these cast irons in the Dutch ovens, let it rise again, a final proofing, and then we'll get it baked outside. I'm gonna just dust this surface a little with some flour. Just put plenty of good oil. You can use an avocado oil like the one that Montana Max makes. You can use an olive oil. Just make sure that the whole Bottom is lined, divide it in half. In she goes. Even them out. Get them spread nice and evenly in the bottom of the pan. Lids on. Now, these cast irons are also sitting in this, in this room at 40 degrees. So I'm gonna find a nice sunny place in the house here. I think those window sills will be perfect. So when you're proofing dough, we're waiting for it to double in size. I think we can find an ambient temperature that's maybe in the 60s or 70s, which is about perfect. Let it rise up to just about double, then we'll cook it. So I'm gonna bring this outside to the kitchen to this exterior room where there's some sunlight. Let's see how we do. Throw these focaccia beautifully proofed on our coals outside, and we'll come back in here and finish our appetizer. Yeah. 
whole bed looks great. So with focaccia to finish it. Little oil on top. I like to dimple the tops. Let it soak up. Place for all that oil to hang out, you know. Looks phenomenal. You could feed an army with this braised elk shank dish. We're gonna brighten it up. A little fresh chopped parsley. Her. So, what do we have here? Braised elk shanks, simmered in red wine and bone stock, tons of herbs and spices, campfire focaccia baked over the coals, sauteed garlicky greens, creamy polenta, a must. It's gonna be the base for all of this great flavor. So, thinking about your elk camp, when you're thinking about going hunting, I just don't know how you could think about going out, adventuring, putting your heart into it, and then coming home and then falling short. So when you're cooking wild game, when you're thinking about your adventures, give some priority to your food, give it your heart, have fun cooking it. I can't imagine a better way to wrap this up than campfire, stars above, food in our belly, thinking about our next hunt, our next adventure. Have fun out there doing it.